Brother Hector, welcome to Western Australia. Thank you very much, Brother John. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, if we go back some years, you were called to faith originally in El Salvador, where you were born. Can you tell me a little bit how you were called to Christ and how you were called to the body of Christ that we serve in? Well, actually, Brother, uh, I would say I was raised in the Church of God Seventh Day in El Salvador. My father got baptized while I was five years old. And uh, then, while I was a teenager, uh, I got astray. You know, I decided to go to the war. But, you know, in my mind was still the, the calling of the Lord. Uh, at the age of 23, I married my beautiful wife, Imelda. We've been married for 42 years. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. And then uh, I was about 27 when I decided to go back to the Lord. And then I continued visiting uh, the Church of God Seventh Day. And then in uh, 1983, I got baptized. After I got baptized a few months later, you know, after a quick training, they ordained me as a, we call it obreros in Spanish, which is a worker. And I started working in a local church as a secretary of the board. What was it that then took you from El Salvador and took you then to Canada? Well, when I decided to go to Canada, my, my two children, my first two children, they were teenagers, and in El Salvador started some kind of gangs among the schools. And my son was threatened a couple of times. And I said, no, I don't want this for my children. And we decided to immigrate to Canada. And uh, actually taking my children out of the dangers of El Salvador was uh, a great choice. Mm. As I mentioned to you before, I should have come to Australia. And were you able to settle into church life fairly easily in Canada, or did it take some time? Uh, no, actually, uh, the first, uh, I would say, four weeks I immigrated to Canada, I was able to meet uh, Brother Andres Menhever, which is one of the ministers of the Church of God Seventh Day. And... Uh, we, we used to be really, really good friends. We are still very good friends uh, in El Salvador. And he was so happy to see me, and I was so happy to see him. And he said, why don't you come and join us at the church? And I said, sure, I'll be glad to. And because he knew my work uh, at the church in El Salvador, I used to work in several churches. I was a pastor. Uh, I was a member of the district. Uh, I pastored a couple of big churches in El Salvador. He, he said, why don't you come and join us? And then uh, the first year I was elected as the pastor of the church, and I, I pastored the church, uh, the Spanish church, a couple of times. Later on, we had a, a few problems, you know, problems that happened in, in all churches. And then the church disappeared. Then I decided to join the English church, where I served for about seven years. But then I saw the need of people who were members of the Church of God Seventh Day in El Salvador and couldn't speak English. So you're saying that there were other people who migrated to Canada as well? Yes, yeah, they, they immigrated to Canada probably before myself. And there are some elderly people, even uh, my parents. You know, my parents, they are members of the church, but they do not speak English. Then I decided to, I decided to work in the Spanish uh, area to help those people. And even though we're not so many, we're about 20. Sometimes we get more than 20 in our church. But uh, I think I'm doing good, you know. Oh, that's, that's, that's where God calls us and motivates yeah. us and encourages us. <laughs> Um, can you tell me what's it like being part of a Christ-centered church? Well, you know, being part of, a, of the church is a great experience. 
something that you cannot buy with money, something that you cannot experience in the world. Being part of the Church of God is uh, something that makes you feel good mm -hmm. about yourself, you know, because now that I'm here in Australia, I feel that I have family all over the world. So what does it mean then to be Christ-centered? Well, you know, to be Christ-centered, it means to me that Christ is the center of my life. That's what the, the word means to me, and that's what it's supposed to be. If we go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Paul says that, you know, that what he said that he is crucified with Christ. And I don't live myself, he said, but Christ lives in me. Then what he meant with that is that the center of his life is Jesus Christ in his heart. That's what uh, Christ Center means to me. If you look across the demographics of the various churches of God, you'll see different levels of growth and development. What are the risks of churches being more law-centered as opposed to Christ-centered? Well, you know, when churches are law-centered, they become sometimes so strict. And what is happening is, they don't center in Jesus Christ. And when you do not center in Jesus Christ, what is happening is, <laughs> you think you are obtaining salvation by your own deeds. Mm -hmm. And you know, according to the Holy Scripture, <laughs> salvation is just a gift of God. I'm going to tell you a story. I remember uh, a few years ago, I went to Nicaragua, and this brother, he was a deacon in the church, and uh, he asked me about the Ten Commandments. And I asked him, why do you observe the Ten Commandments? He said, because I want to be saved. He said, well, you're doing it the wrong way. He said, why? Because you are telling Jesus Christ, your sacrifice isn't enough for me. <laughs> and I'm doing my part. You know, it's not the way. And he asked me, do you obey the, the commandments? I said, yes, but I don't do them to be saved. I do, it, I do them because I'm already saved. And because I'm already saved, it's easy for me to do the commandment. And I said to him, see, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, he said that we have been created to do good deeds. And that's what it happened. And then he said, oh, believe me, I never heard of this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, you know, uh, I'm a Christ-centered person, and I, I believe I do understand the grace of Jesus Christ enough to believe it so. Hmm. So when you're looking and, and living that dynamic of being Christ-centered, how do you mentor and teach a younger generation to begin to form that relationship with Christ? Well, that is the way I, I teach them. You know, you do not obey the law to be saved. You obey the law because you are already saved. You don't do anything to be saved because Jesus did it for you. You obey Jesus Christ because you are already part of the family of God. And it's part of uh, not your responsibility, but your uh, inner spirit to do it. Mm, 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 mm. That was very exciting. Um, Jesus said, um, if you love me, you'll keep, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments, yeah. And we do it out of love for Jesus Christ. Wow. Yeah, That's absolutely. That's total, that, that covenant relationship that binds us together. Amen. Uh, so if you were looking towards the future, how do you see the Church of God, Seventh Day, stepping out counterculturally into the future to represent Christ in the world? Well, you know, I see some, uh, not only spiritual growth in the, in the church, but I see a growth in number, you know. Uh, I see the Church of God uh, Seventh Day in the future as a more dynamic church.
because we often talk about being a vibrant 21st century church. Absolutely. And about arriving there, but the more Christ-centered we become, that's where our vibrance exists. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because when we are more Christ-centered, we depend 100% on Jesus. Exactly, no. exactly. Not in our own deeds. Yeah. We depend 100% on, on Him. And, um, and Jesus placed the emphasis on that the world may believe, and John says that especially, that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. And by living this sense of community, and you've had the privilege to live in El Salvador, in, in no, Canada. In, no, in Canada. And now you're visiting in Australia. So you're yeah. really privileged and blessed. Yeah, to, amen, amen. Yeah. To, I feel so blessed because... I have had the opportunity to meet uh, the family of God mm, mm, mm. in every place. I have visited uh, several churches in America. I have visited a couple of churches in, uh, actually three churches in Canada. I was in Manitoba a couple of years ago. A few years ago I was in Montreal. And last year I visited the Church of God Seventh Day in Vancouver, British Columbia. Given, all, given the background of the, your experience in both El Salvador and now in Canada, um, what are the strengths or what are the ways in the different countries where evangelism works most effective? Um, because different countries have different nuances and governments and, and culture and expectations. Um, is there any difference or is it much the same? No, you know, that's a good question. And I, uh, I'm really glad you, you asked this question. You know... When you see evangelism, you see, you see it in two ways. El Salvador is a poor, poor country. You know, <laughs> to make you an idea how small is El Salvador, it fits inside of Western Australia almost 81 times. And it has almost 7 million people. There's lots of poverty over there. And when people have poverty, they're more, you know, open-hearted to the gospel. Mm. Then it's uh, easier to go and evangelize in El Salvador where there are lots of poor people and they believe that the, their only hope is Jesus Christ than in Canada. Because in Canada... If they don't have a job, they go to the social service. If they don't have jobs, they go to, you know, unemployment. If they don't have food, they go to the food bank. And mm. they have so many, we have so many blessings in Canada that people realize that mm, I don't really need Jesus Christ because I have here everything I need. And uh, I always say this, people in Canada, uh, they're... Their hearts are so frozen as the cold weather of it. <laughs> well, I understand you left Canada at minus 30 degrees. Yes, it uh, was. Was that Celsius or Fahrenheit? Celsius. Celsius. We use Celsius, yeah. Well, we're experiencing plus 30 to 40 degrees over here. Yeah, so the difference is, is enormous. Oh, brother. Hector, it's been a privilege and an honour to have you as a guest here in Australia. Welcome to Conversations, and I hope the remainder of your stay here is a blessing and you take back some wonderful memories from Australia. Thank you very much, Brother John.